Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. I am Dr. Linda Kramer. Now, the first thing I'm going to say in this video is please be patient with my lighting and my audio situation. I am in a new house and obviously I've got to work out lights here. Um, I'm in a like a little study nook, so I've got to go and get some more high powered lights. I've got a ring light, but it obviously wasn't doing too good. So I've actually turned it off and now I've got a little table lamp. So I've got to go and buy some new lighting, okay? So today is all about forgiveness. I had an email just this morning about a man who's asked me some questions. And he says, how can he forgive himself for the mistakes that he has made himself that has hurt others and he has regrets over hurting other people? So I'm going to go over to my book, Five Years in Heaven, The Teachings of Heaven. In this book, over on page 293, I talk about forgiveness. Okay, let's have a little read here first. It is the release of all the negative emotions like grudges, resentment and vengeance. It comes once we accept all for what they are. Once we understand and comprehend the actions of others from their perspective and that line that I like to say that goes bad things happen to good people, we learn to allow that person their own right for their own decisions. We accept what they did and we simply let it go. That's it in a nutshell. But it go, forgiveness goes for, let me just see here. It goes one, two, three. It's three pages long where I talk about forgiveness. So forgiveness comes when we say to ourselves first that we were only doing what we felt was the right decision at that time. We can't go back in history and say, oh man, 20 years ago, I wish I'd done that. Because 20 years ago, we didn't have the information that we now have. We can't go back in time and make any different changes to what we did or our actions because at that time, we were only doing what we thought was the best option available to us. Okay? So when we forgive ourselves, which we must do first before we can even forgive other people, we go back through our lives and we look at certain instances, say when we're five years old, when we're 10 years old, when we're 15 years old, when we're 20 years old, and we pick out these instances where we think, wow, I really did make a big boo-boo back then. Why did I marry that person for? Or why did I not take that job when it came up? Or, oh man, if I'd only gone on that trip, those things would have happened. We can never say those things because we never know what truly could have happened if we'd done something differently. Our life may have never worked out the way it has if we'd done those things, yes? I was offered, when I was 18, I was offered a half share of a McDonald's store. Um, the manager wanted to buy it with me and he said it was $125,000 each because back in the 80s, this restaurant sold for $250,000. So I asked advice from my parents. I asked, even asked a teacher about it at school. And they all said, you're mad because McDonald's will never go anywhere. That store sold about 10 years ago for $9 million. I could easily have a regret over not doing that. But back then, when I was only a 17-year-old, look at the information that was available to me then that I did not have that I would have now. So at a 17-year-old, $125,000 was a lot of money when you could buy a house for $35,000 back then, right? So pardon me, it was a massive amount of money. So we look at the information that we had. 
Could have my life gone smoothly and beautiful? Well, that's only an assumption. I could have worked there for three weeks doing the 50 hour days that I was expected to do, be there from two hours before they open to two hours after they close because I was the owner. All that stress on my body, I could have ended up having a heart attack, I could have had a stroke, I could have had some industrial accident where the oil burnt me, I could have ended up in hospital, could have had a major car accident driving to work one day when I was tired. There's all these possibilities that I was saved from because I didn't do it. So we can never hold on to regrets, especially about things that we've never done, because we have this assumption in our head that everything would have worked out well. When it didn't, it couldn't have, because nothing ever works out well. Look at anyone's life. We all have the ups and the downs. So nothing ever goes smoothly, okay? So it's only an assumption where we were trying to justify why we didn't do what we thought now we should have done in our past. So when we look at our actions towards others and we say, oh man, I really wish that I hadn't done that. I wish I'd never did that. But back then, at that time, we had no other option. We could never have done anything different to how we did it. So that's where you've got to really cut yourself down. And you say, hang on, Linda. Back then, you had to do what you did because you didn't have the information now. You didn't know what was going to be the outcome. You don't know what would have happened to your health, what would have happened to the other people around you, what would have happened to your car, traveling situation. You are only surmising, which is a f false belief that our brain creates, thinking that everything would have turned out rosy if we had done that other thing. So stop thinking about it, guys. We really do not have to punish ourselves over things that happened two years, 20 years, 200 years ago in our lives. Okay? Pardon me. Now, when it comes to other people, how do we say, oh my God, I really hurt that person? How do I ever make it up to them and ask them for forgiveness? That right there is how we do it. Ask for forgiveness. Saying sorry is one of the hardest things that people do, especially now in 2023. So one option of how to say sorry is to find that person and physically say to them, I am sorry for what I did. I hope that you forgive me. At that time, I was only doing what I thought was the best thing because that's the honest to God truth. But now I have all this other information. I've got all this new experiences. I know life skills and I've learned lessons. So, so now I know what I'm doing. But back then I didn't. But what if we don't get that opportunity? That person may have died, moved into state overseas. That person may not want to ever talk to us again. So do we have to track them down and stalk them and say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, as we're running down behind them, running down the street as they're trying to get away from us? No, we don't have to do that. The only person that we have to be forgiveness, give forgiveness to is ourselves. In heaven, we create a perspective of what happened in our life. That's why religious people see a God, Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha. That's why people who love gardening end up in this beautiful garden. That's why animal people always see heaps of animals there. Because we see a perspective, or should I say we experience a perspective of what we create in our conscious awareness. Hell, on the other hand, is also a perspective of all those negative emotions that we hang on to, like grudges and regrets and guilt. So please, guys, if you feel guilty over anything in your life, this is your chance to turn it around and say sorry to yourself for doing it. 
At that time, you had no other option to do what you did. You had to do it. It was inevitable. Even though when you think you had choices, and there's, well, there's fate, and there's precognition of predestined events that could come into the foreplay there. But at the end of the day, the only thing that you could have done was what you did. There was no other option in the past. We can't change it. So acceptance is key. Learning how to accept all those things that we didn't do, all those things that we did do, all those mistakes, errors, everything else, they were learning choices for us where we learned our life lessons. How do we learn a lesson unless we make a mistake? How do you ever learn to ride a bike unless you fall off it and learn how to balance yourself? So this is where we use that analogy, like the metaphor of riding a bike, because if we fall off that bike 10,000 times, 10,000 times we're learning not how to fall off our bike. So we have to make mistakes in our lives. So stop beating yourself up over them, guys. And if anyone has hurt you, Think about how you react to what their actions are. Because the only person they have to forgive is themselves as well. We don't have to say, oh man, you really hurt me 10 years ago. I want you to say sorry. Because that's our ego getting involved in karma that they themselves have to deal with. They've done all the choices that they can. They've got the free will to do the decisions that they do. They've made their own choices. So why do we have to feel any sort of retaliation or revenge or justification to know why they did what they did when it's their life to live? So stop trying to control what other people do. You know, I look at people like mass murderers. We had a big one here in Australia, Ivan Milad. Let's name another mass murderer, Adolf Hitler. Let's look at them. Should I walk up to Adolf Hitler in heaven and say, why did you do it? It's none of my business. Because it's his responsibility of the actions that he himself did. He's the one that's got to turn to himself and say, Adolf, you know, you're only doing what you thought was the best at that time. So I forgive you and I'm sorry. Because now I'm learning how to be a better man. What happens to the people who don't learn how to be better people? They go through their life not saying ever that they were sorry because they feel so justified that they feel they were so righteous in doing whatever they did. And they're the ones I truly feel sorry for. Because it's only in the life review, which I talk about in my book, because I was in my life review for a very long time, where I had to heal thousands of my own memories, where that's where I felt that perspective from the other person who I had affected through my emotional connections. Okay? So if you want to get further information, please email me or go over to my website and you can get a copy of my book. Please don't buy it off Lulu. Come to me personally. It's a lot cheaper. Okay, then you're not supporting big conglomerates. Okay, then you can print it yourself and it's a lot cheaper. Okay, I'm trying to save you some money here, guys. So below in the description, I've got a way of getting my book. My life reviews in that book how to be more forgiving is in that book. How to accept people. Don't worry about what they do because that is their issue. Okay? The only person that you have to justify is you. And if you can turn to yourself like I've done heaps of times and I say to myself, Linda, wow, you were a real witch when you were a teenager. You hurt some really good people back then. And I sit there and I psychoanalyze and I go back through those memories. And I think, yeah, I'm right. 
I was a witch back then. And then I say, I'm sorry. I don't want to be that person again. I am doing everything I can in my power now that I know differently. Now that I'm learning more life lessons. Now that I'm learning how to be more kind, loving, understanding, compassionate. And most of all, forgiving to myself first. So I don't hurt others in my future. We can't change the future, guys. But we can certainly change our futures. And if you wish to be a better person tomorrow than you were yesterday, grab a copy of my book or watch my other videos on this channel to learn how to be your best possible version. If you've liked today's video, please share it to your friends. Please like this video if you like it. Most of all, if you do wish to donate towards what I do, there's a PayPal link below. Thank you so much for coming and I'll talk to you all again soon. Bye.